All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. So, um, I have this box from Will at Gajo Spirit Chats. He's the owner of the company. Um, I reached out to him and uh, asked for an opportunity to work for him, work with him, not for him, work with him um, as a promotion for their company. And I thought, I have to do this unboxing, I wanna do this unboxing, and I, as you can see, have not opened this box. I'm so excited to know what's inside of this, and uh, it's been a day since I've had it, and I couldn't wait to open it. Um, so I just want to go over some stuff that's in here. I have no idea what's in here yet. I'm about to find out at the exact same time you are. All right, so with that being said, um, I'm going to break into this box and see what's inside. Like I said, it's, it's all brand new for me, and I thought, what better place to do it than here at the boat launch at my local lake? Uh, I'm gonna head out to the lake right after this, so we will be able to put some of these baits to the test. Now, I do know this lake is fishing extremely difficult. I know uh, a couple buddies left our to uh, tournaments early without fish, unable to actually even get fish in the boat. So it has been a very, very, very tough bite from what I understand. I haven't been here in three weeks. The last time I was here, they were on beds. So it's been quite a bit of time since I've been here. Um, they're definitely postponed at this point. They're definitely going to feed up eventually, but will today be that day? Will these baits change that? Who knows? I do know that these baits are confidence baits for me. So I, I'm very familiar with most of the stuff that's going to be in this box. Uh, however, I don't know if they will be able to put fish in the boat today, but we're gonna try. All right, let's get into this box. First look, uh, immediately. Uh -huh. Funny story, these are probably um, two of my most confident colors. I This is definitely my most confident color. Uh, this is their green pumpkin, purple gold flake, spirit shad. And what this is, is basically a drop shot bait. You can throw it on an Ed rig as well, but I use this exclusively for drop, drop, drop shot, find my words. I use this exclusively for drop shot, and I've got quite a bag of them. Uh, as you can see, the other item in this bag is Morning Dawn. So we have just the Spirit Shads, Morning Dawn, and the Green Pumpkin Gold Purple Flake. Oh, you gotta see these guys too. Same, same concept, Green Pumpkin, and the uh, purple flake, this is purple black flake, but this is their stick bait. Basically, this is a wacky rig worm. You can fish it Texas style as well. We'll probably actually throw this today because it's 3 p.m., sun is hot right now. We are going to probably try to skip a couple docks, see if those fish have pulled up. If they have, we'll fish it. If they haven't, we'll move on to something different. But this is their version of a stick bait couple packages of stick baits. Uh, green pumpkin, it looks like these are purple. These are purple orange. These are phenomenal, black blue, one of my favorite colors. Uh, a second package of black blue, it looks like. We have just everything, green pumpkin, purple flake. Another package of green pumpkin, purple flake. Green pumpkin, black flake. Green pumpkin, this is a perch color, phenomenal on those perch lakes, Onondaga, Atisco, like all those northern lakes that I I call perch lakes, those are big perch heavy feeding lakes. You like that orange, you like that green. And again, another stick bait, another stick bait. Unbelievable. Watermelon red black flake. Let me get this guy out, you guys gotta, I mean, you've seen this color I'm sure, but this is one of my favorite favorite baits, watermelon, red, black flake. It's confidence color for me again. If I'm taking uh, stick baits anywhere and I'm packing as a co-angler, so I'm packing lightly, I am throwing either watermelon, red, black flake, I'm throwing black, blue, and I'm throwing like a smoke purple, black purple, purple smoke, something along those lines. Sometimes I'll take a white shad style color, just in case, depends on the lake and where we're going. Those are my usual go-tos. If I'm heading to a Tisco in upstate New York or on a Daga, I'm throwing an orange perch bait color because just feeding on perch there, I do know that the gobies, uh, the little round gobies, they just got into Onondaga or on Daga from what I understand. So that lake may transition from a perch heavy feeding lake where you're throwing an orange and greens 
to uh, that brown again same same concept that that goby color which is the purple gold green pumpkin color I know that the gajo makes a paradise I'm hoping that's in here too because low-key one of my favorite colors I actually think that's named after Brad paradise I think he is a semi-professional fishes the Costa Northeast division fishes the BFL FLW BFLs in the Northeast division I'm pretty sure that's named after Brad paradise it's one of his colors but that happens to be one of my low-key favorite colors to throw basically north of Pennsylvania. Uh -huh. Again, some more stick baits. I, it looks like I got two of every color, two packages of every color, just chartreuse. These are bright chartreuse stick baits. Again, more stick baits, just a bunch of those. And uh, here we go. This is crazy. So I was just talking about that paradise color. Well, as you can see here, I've got that paradise color in a stick bait. So purple, gold flake, iridescent blue bottom. Low key, so good in a goby lake, so great. Uh, you can't really beat it, honestly. It is one of my favorite colors to throw. Oneida, St. Lawrence, Ontario, all of those places, you're just uh, almost guaranteed. Where those gobies are heavy, and you got that little iridescent bottom, it just smashes fish. So you've seen me on the St. Lawrence. I've thrown these on the St. Lawrence, this paradise color, and put fish in the boat. I've thrown the morning dawn, put fish in the boat, the brown, uh, the green pumpkin, purple gold flake that I told you is probably my top color, regardless of where I'm at. Uh, I've thrown that on the St. Lawrence when we were up there. I think you saw two tournaments if you look back in my videos. And uh, both, all three of those colors, I've had extremely good success for. I really do hope that there are some serious amounts of that paradise color in the <laughs> in the spirit chats. And uh, another phenomenal. I'm looking at, I'm smiling because I've got three more, more packs of the black blue spirit shad, which again, anytime that water is dark, Oneida has got a, had a real bad time recently with some bad algae blooms. And uh, anytime that water is super duper dark or dark green, I'm throwing black blue. It's just what I go to. If it's real green, green, uh, sometimes that brown will contra contrast really well, like a dark brown. But I, I'm usually throwing black. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm throwing a black jig. I'm throwing a black. <laughs> I'm throwing. If I'm throwing drop shot, I'm throwing a black Gajo Spirit Chad. Or I'm throwing a black Senko. So, I mean, that's just my go-tos. Uh, so I'm glad to have a couple packs of those. Here's another, again, Chartreuse. This is a real good color, again, when that water gets muddy or dark. Um, again, one of my go-tos in the event that the water is muddy. Not an algae bloom as much, um, mud. If it's like brown, not green, I'm going to a chartreuse or a chartreuse and white, which is great because that's exactly what these are as well. Let me get one out here for you and I'll show you, but this is a chartreuse back and a white belly. Hope the camera picks that up well. But again, this is just one of those baits that's going to put fish in the boat, especially when you have muddy water conditions. Um, you want that white, you want them to be able to see it. Black, again, is another good combination for muddy water, but I do tend to throw black a little more in an algae bloom situation, personally. Um, everybody throws their colors during their time and everything like that, but that's just my case, my scenario. I'm digging because I am hoping to find some paradise in here, and I believe I just found it. So, these are the spear shads. I know I've already shown you the spear shad a couple times, but that's that paradise color. Green pumpkin back, purple orange flake, and a blue iridescent bottom. This is hands down my favorite, favorite Oneida, favorite St. Lawrence River color, depending on the conditions, of course. Um, again, things swap, but on normal clear water conditions, I absolutely maul them on this specific bait. You'll get to see this more as we go through the season and everything that goes on, but unbelievable on, in that case, what we get done with that bait specifically. Uh, this is 
Another different color, it's a blue black shiner. Again, another, it's an interesting, interesting concept because it's clear, clear shiny, clear um, and silver flake, but then it's got this level in it that you can't really pick up well probably on camera, but the back is like a iridescent blue. And it's just, again, another one of those phenomenal colors that anywhere you have Alewives, anywhere you have Shiners, I can throw it on Cayuga, I can throw it on on this local lake when it's clear and clean, early spring, because um, we have Alewives, it matches them real well, so I do like that. <laughs> Spirit Shads in the Perch, again, Oneida, Tisco, or um, Onondaga, Tisco. Three packs of those. Like, here is your watermelon grape. It's, again, the watermelon and uh, purple flake just phenomenal colors in my opinion I love these baits I use them so frequently watermelon red in the spirit chat again again this is watermelon red black flake this is a confidence color for me when I'm throwing a stick bait so same situation if I'm throwing a drop shot and I need uh, another confidence color and they're not taking the brown purple gold I'll throw the watermelon red black flake especially if it's just normal water conditions and nothing nothing really bad nothing dirty nothing algae bloom when I'm not looking for a specific color I'm looking for an all-around color that'll work on any lake watermelon red black flake is my go-to for an all-around good color more of the same more of the same looks like I have a bunch of packs on here <laughs> another pack of the paradise three packs of those which is key perfect situation will hook me up fat with these baits and uh here's another one of those those ones i was talking about before uh three more packs of the green pumpkin purple gold flake purple orange flake purple orange flake uh, orange gold it's it's stuff it's orange i guess in this case but anyway these just represent that green uh, that goby up in the north uh, it's a great bait i catch them a lot here in my local lake even on a lake where there is no gobies my local lake doesn't have gobies but this just represents any normal bait fish um you get that sometimes even if you th throw it on a short leader you get that uh bite that even they're thinking it's like a crayfish on the bottom if you throw it on like a two or three inch leader so again this is just a bait that can be used all around the country i think um i have had a lot of success in pa and in new york state i'm planning on taking these everywhere else as well so that's that's just my goal uh come on now honestly at the end you've already seen me throw these they're bone white it's just a white spirit chat these are just another go-to bait in the spring you can use them uh anytime you have dirty muddy water the white works as well those spirit chads are getting thrown on a drop shot the gajo sticks are probably most likely getting wacky rigged they're getting put on a like a an octopus hook or a circ um or like a mosquito style hook that's really my plan there i will throw them as well on a drop shot it depends on the day and how things are going but that's realistically my plan with all of those baits what i got here today was a bunch of stick baits and a bunch of spirit chads and we're gonna try to put them to use today i'm gonna skip docks i'm gonna throw a drop shot we're gonna see if we can get bites on a lake that's basically shut down from what i understand we've had a lot of pressure here with the coronavirus going around unfortunately um there's been a lot of extra anglers on the water so there's been a lot more stress on the water and a lot more stress on the fish so i do um appreciate having the extra anglers it's a lot of, it's a lot better knowing that there's more people getting into the sport getting into the competition but the fish are struggling with it so with that being said there are so many more anglers that they're seeing so many more baits that sometimes you're having an issue catching fish and now that i'm talking to you and looking down at my hands the spirit shads are also oily um salt impregnated they're i don't know what the smell is i really should ask i don't know what that scent is but either way it's on all over my hands from holding these baits i'm gonna try to get cleaned up real quick and i guess i will throw you to my chest and let's get on the water and see if we can get some bites stay tuned all right guys so bad news um just got back from a vacation up at my family's 
and what you're gonna find out is I took all my stuff with me of course so I took out of the boat um, all my terminal tackle and a bunch of the baits that I would have used up there the bad news is um, I forgot to put it back in the boat before we left I got here my clip from my GoPro harness was broken so I guess I'm just having one of those days it was a struggle to to get myself uh, in order and then I just can't seem to get going I don't know what's going on with me so uh, we are limited to the tackle I have attached so as soon as I break off and and uh, basically cannibalize all my rods and reels that I currently have on the boat that's what I've got so we're gonna start out with the drop shot uh, which was not my plan but I don't have any wacky rig hooks um, I have a few more jig hooks like Cabin Creek hooks and stuff that's left over here uh, and that's basically it and I have one Tokyo rig on deck um, which really isn't probably useful here. Oh, I have a Ned rig too. So who knows how this video is gonna go now, but uh, really the point of this video was the actual unboxing and say thanks to Will and everything that he uh, does for me and um, showcase these baits really. You're gonna see a ton more of them throughout the rest of the year because I I've said it countless times, they are a, a clutch staple confidence bait for me like when i need a bite and know i need a bite uh you know fifth inning five, sixth inning ninth inning well, i don't know baseball i'm not a baseball guy anyway ninth inning need a hit i'm going with a with a spirit shad that's just me personally so it's one of those things that i throw a lot and i have a lot of confidence in so i'm all about all about trying to get these uh get these out here and get a bite on them uh, I throw in, or I am throwing black blue. It's just kind of, again, the water is green. This water is always green. And I know that black blue is a decent color here. So it's just one of those things, but gonna see if we get a bite. We might not. Uh, I know it's been tough. I just saw a couple of friends of mine leaving the lake that didn't have anything going on today. Nothing, nothing exciting, nothing big, uh, a couple smalls, but that doesn't really get me down. I'm just going to keep going and try my best, see what I can do. Right now I'm fishing a little flat. There's a weed edge in there. I actually don't know if the weeds came up. I kind of have to scroll in to see if they came up or not. I marked one fish in 15. I'm really trying to get down to this point. I'm working with the wind here a little bit, trying to get down to this point, And I'm going to, at this point, kind of turn around and work the point. See if I can get any of these smallies that come back, have come back out. I don't know if they will have by now, but I'm going to see what I can do. Uh, I just had a hit there, a little hit, little, 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 tiny hit. Could have been a uh, rock bass, but little hit. There's an old foundation here in front of me that I'm fishing right now. It's in like six or eight foot of water. Little bite there, but again, they're just pecking at it. It's gotta be sunfish. There's one. Ha! I was wrong. It's a rock bass. Just goes to show you though, these baits will literally catch every species. Welcome to the to the boat, rock bass. Back to the resource. I knew there was a fish there, just didn't know what fish it was. Found it out. Alright. So just nose hooking this, this Gajo Spirit Chad. And like I said, black blue is just one of my staple colors. All right, guys, gonna change up. I am looking for a, that tried and true color I was telling you about. I am looking for the brown, maybe just a purple. Purple, black, let's do this. So I'm taking a stick bait here. We know, like I said, I'm limited on tackle, uh, so I don't have a skipping hook. But what I'm gonna do here is take one of my rods, probably this won't work because I'll end up getting hung up and losing it immediately. Uh, I am taking one of my rods, I'm going to actually take this stick bait, fold it in half, find that center line, and I'm actually gonna break this off a little bit on the short end at the like fourth knuckle down because I am going to take this bait and turn it into my Ned rig. 
So now I have basically a little turd boop, on a cannibalized Cabin Creek jig head, which had a swim bait on it. But that bite I know has died off. Uh, it usually does by this time of year because they've stopped being up here feeding on bait fish shallow. Now I'm just throwing a green pumpkin purple, a oh, dark green pumpkin purple. Stick bait, gajo stick bait. I, I lost my train of thought because I was looking where I was going to throw. And I'm going to try skip it up under the docks for as long as I can before it breaks off. Uh, probably two casts if I know anything about this lake, which I would say I do. But we'll give it our best. Ooh, got pecked. Must be the uh, rock bass are still really... They're doing a number on this lake. I don't know. Uh, maybe we need something that eats rock bass. I don't think that the bass bass are doing a good enough job. Yep, it is a rock bass. So we've got two rock bass on two different versions of gajo baits. One on the stick bait and one on the spirit chat. So that is my fish for the day. Number two, I should say, actually. Back to the resource he goes. Boop. And he's gone. Something. Usually I get hung up. I never thought I would make it more than three casts. I never thought I'd make it more than two casts, to be honest with you. That's usually my limit with this lake. But uh, we're going to keep trying. Let's get back there. Three poles deep. Let's see if they're back there. Deep, deep. Hit. I don't know what this is. This could be a bass. Or it could be, wow, these spirit chats literally, well, this is a, a gajo stick, catch everything. Now I uh, may or may not have foul hooked that little sunfish, but I tried to thumb him. His mouth was too small. <laughs> oh, what a day. I can't, uh, I can't even believe that I've caught everything in the lake that isn't a bass so far the good news is gajo baits will literally catch every fish that exists doesn't matter what it is catching it so far sunfish rock bass rock bass not the species we're after but it will catch all versions of the food chain from the bait to the bass just got to get the bass now something oh my god unbelievable the amount of rock bass that are in this lake i don't know what to do about these i mean i guess there's obviously nothing i can do about them specifically but like i don't know what the lake will do about these um i don't know if maybe the bass don't eat on them um if anyone knows please drop a comment uh what what do bass eat these i mean they're they're decent sized fish I think it would take a big fish to uh, eat them because, I mean, they're relative. I keep hitting that dock. They're relatively big. They're, they're, they got big spines compared to sunfish. Just wondering, what do you think, uh, what do you think takes those? Do they have any predation or any predators of any sort? Or do they just grow exponentially because no one really eats them? Plus, do we have, I mean, there's a few, you see a few fives and six pounders come out of here, but like, I, I would assume not enough to eat all of these rock bass, but like they, I used to catch one or two uh, a spring and now I catch one to four a trip. Like, it's just, it's crazy. I don't know if, uh, I just don't know if nothing eats them or if something doesn't eat them, I mean. Not nothing eats them. If anything eats them, I actually have no idea. Strange. Anyway, something food for thought. Let me know in the comments if you if you know, uh, or maybe you have an example of a bass that's eaten rock bass, or if they do that, or if they just don't have natural predators. Maybe that's the case.
I wasn't even filming for this, guys. I skipped under that same dock again and caught a second rock bass. I don't even know. I don't. I don't know what to say. This is literally rock bass number, I think, four for the day. You might have already seen four, maybe. I think there's four. Anyway, another rock bass. Crazy. They're just nuts. There's so many. I don't know what to do about them. I don't know if anything can be done about them. seen anything like this I can't stress how important it is drop a comment why are these guys so prevalent Calm, calm yourself. Well, when you fish the Ned Rig, occasionally you get a four inch smallmouth. I mean, I guess it's a smallie, but he's just cute. Let's give him a micro release. Let's see if he'll show us some good stuff. Ah! <laughs> oh, God. I guess that's what you get when you fish a micro bait, but smallie under the dock. There's one. go guys I thought today was gonna be a complete failure um, as you can see Gajo spear shad drop shot little skinny bear mosquito light wire hook gets a two and a half pounder I mean like I said it's not a specifically a big fish but it is a large mouth nonetheless and this is a good feeling so today guys, I have unboxed the Gajo baits, tied on with limited tackle on a drop shot and put a two and a half pound largie in the boat. I know that this is a, a nicer fish in this time because some of the tournaments are getting one with three pounders as the biggest fish. So a two and a half is an amazing fish in theory. Just wash my hands real quick. A two and a half, a bag of two and a halfs can almost win it when you have three pounders and three and a halfs as your lunker for the tournament. You know what I mean? That's a that's not far off on a kicker fish, basically. Oh my gosh. Finally, I've been searching for like two and a half hours now, three hours. Oh, two and a half hours it's been trying to get one bite, and I finally just I, I should never set down the drop shot. It's just a confidence uh, tactic for me. I know it catches fish and I know that if I fish it, oh, he ruined that. If I fish it long enough, I will catch fish and they will be good ones. So we're gonna dig back into this Gajo Spirit Shad Baits, or Gajo, <laughs> Gajo Baits box and get us another black blue flake and uh, rig back up and go from there hopefully we can get a couple more that would be super nice i would be really excited about that especially after fishing like i said on such limited 
tackle. Um, I only have one drop shot tied on. I usually lose this in like the first six casts. So I don't even know. Someone's on my side today. I don't know who, but somebody's on my side because I still got it so far. Knock on wood. I'll probably lose it now that I said something, but usually I'm already through 10 drop shots by now. Two hours in. Oh my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. I usually can lose a, either a sinker or a hook every 10 minutes because this lake is just sticky you just break off there's rocks everywhere people throw the mattress springs in here to stop fishermen from fishing underneath their docks there's just like a crazy amount of stuff going on but anyway thank god one fish finally not what I expected to come out of there. All right, guys, that's not what I expected to come out of here. Uh, let me turn you around. I've got to get switched around myself so that my boat doesn't bump their dock. Um, little largy. He's not probably legal. I think he's only about 12, 11 inches, maybe on the high side, but it's not a bad fish. Um, still happy to have him. Got him on that black gajo spirit chat again. All right, guys, well, what a great day of fishing. Uh, I started out today just doing an unboxing. I wanted to do an unboxing in a different location, so I came out to the lake and did it in the parking lot, uh, no matter how hot that was, let me tell you. Um, I was all discombobulated after my trip to my family's. Like I said, you'll see those videos coming out pretty soon here. Um, they may already be out. It depends on when they get edited on the channel and whatnot. But um, huge shout out again to Gajo Bates, Gajo Spirit Shad, Gajo Sticks as what I got today. Um, really appreciate Will giving me the opportunity. Like I said, if, uh, if you haven't tried them out, they are a confidence bait for me. I know that um, people have their own baits and everything and I'm not here to push something that doesn't work or push something that, I mean, I don't get anything from this obviously, but um, I really do like the baits. I do trust the baits. I've used the baits in countless videos. I'm sure you have, if you look back on my channel, you'll see that I've used these baits before. Check out my St. Lawrence River videos. So, I mean, it's not like I'm promoting something that doesn't work or it's just a cheap crap bait. It's something that I trust and that I use. So I really appreciate uh, the opportunity again to work with Will at Gajo. And uh, I really hope that if you guys have an opportunity, you'll check it out. And uh, if you do, leave a note, maybe say that I sent you. Um, would just mean a lot, really, is all. But I'm going to need to keep using them. It's something, like I said, that I have confidence in. It's, uh, it's a bait that I know catches fish everywhere I go. So as you can see, um, I was told that this lake was fishing pretty poorly. And uh, I caught three tonight. Um, technically, if you count that small that jumped off um, when that lady was speaking to me. Four. I just caught one out of a weed bed up here and another uh, spirit chad, but at this point my camera was off, unfortunately, so I don't have that one. But um, I did catch, technically I hooked four today. Uh, sorry about that interruption. I was trying to beat my battery dying, but I got a little long-winded on Gajo. Um, anyway, guys, if you can, please hit that thumbs up button and the subscribe button down below. Uh, if you have the opportunity, um, give the video a, a like and uh, share the word. Share it on your channels. Share it on your social medias. It really goes a long way, and I really appreciate it. And uh, until next time, I'm not sure what I have planned coming up the pipes, but uh, I guess just roll that music.